Now to a CBS2 exclusive. The carjacking crisis is terrorizing drivers across the city. Is it the car pulling up beside you, behind you, or cutting you off? How bad is it? Well, the county tells us this year there have been an average of five carjackings every day. There's even a dedicated task force to stop them. We asked if we could ride along to see how it works, if it works, and if the city could be doing more. This is the case and the chase that preoccupied the task force for much of the night. Four teenagers, all armed with guns, had carjacked a vehicle north of Austin. We're heading towards those lights. Okay. Somebody got them? They might. Even getting to this point in the chase wasn't easy. Catching the suspects wouldn't be either. More on how it ended in a minute. For the Chicago Vehicle Hijacking Task Force, the night started with roll call at the Cook County Sheriff's Command Post in Austin. Of course, safety is number one. Let's use the helicopter to our best advantage. Let's have a good night, guys. Be safe. Be safe. Parting words that echo on the first stop of the night. A car tracked by the task force crashed into a fence at 44th and Wells on the south side. Shots fired, three arrests, helicopters, and this find five guns, including a fully automatic weapon. But it's also a big deal because they're not accurate. So they're, you're looking at 50 rounds coming down in seconds. Look at all these resources. Oh yeah, and the helicopters we have up the, and everything. They know you're coming for them. Mm -hmm. And yet it continues. Yes, and it will continue until we can get them quickly. This is every night. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, the numbers are the numbers and they're horrible. For every one we get, there's more and more and more coming. Dart says there is one thing that would be a game changer for the carjacking problem we see playing out on Chicago streets, and it falls on car manufacturers. With tracking, with tracking, we could bring this thing almost to an end. Most cars since 2015 have tracking devices, but not all the companies cooperate with law enforcement when vehicles are stolen or carjacked. DART is supporting Illinois and federal laws that would require car manufacturers to staff a 24-7 tracking center. You're trying to tell me that these, you know, billion-dollar corporations can't hire people to work a call center to go after what is probably the largest increase in crime anywhere in the country that's, you know, vexing everybody and scaring people to death where they don't go into cities anymore and they're afraid to leave their houses and they can't put together a call center? Come on. I mean, that's garbage. Talk us through it here, Lieutenant. What do we got? A uh, stolen vehicle fresh stolen today. No. Lieutenant Patrick Donovan has spent 24 years with the county. We've got undercover units behind it. Helicopters on top of it. He took the assignment with the task force two years ago to solve a problem that's only getting worse. We've got to try all sorts of different avenues. He says it's like fishing. It takes patience, persistence, and an understanding that some suspects will slip off the hook. Not this one, though. Officers followed this stolen vehicle from the Dan Ryan to 57, where they pulled over and arrested the driver and recovered the car. And just minutes later, a new carjacking call comes in. Partial tag of Adam Mary. There was a gray Dodge Charger with like tinted windows that was taken by four male subjects with guns. Well, chances are they're going to use that car in some type of a crime, a drive-by. These are just the guys you want to get off the street. All officers can do now is hope the car shows up on one of these. Chances are you've driven past one without even knowing it. Hundreds of them set up around the city and they are critical. A high-tech tool that reads license plates and alerts police to stolen or carjacked vehicles. And sure enough, there's a hit. One of the readers has picked up the carjacked Dodge on Lower Wacker, so that's where we go, using lights and sirens to weave through traffic. The Dodge is still downtown somewhere, hitting on the LPRs down there. So what did that take? Yes, half an hour, and then it popped, and here it is. Half hour, you, you can be sure that four armed guys downtown are up to no good. It was eastbound. Um, uh, on Lower Wacker? Lower Wacker. At, at State Street. CPD units finally have eyes on the car, and we're closing in when CPD decides to pull the plug. You had to call off the pursuit? Yeah, it, it was too dangerous. Too densely populated down here. Not worth the risk. That's all we have. 90 East 
Oh, I can't imagine doing this without these license plate readers. It'd be absolutely impossible. It'd be impossible. Now we wait. We've got about three minutes until the helicopter comes. They'll try and see if they can pick them up, look for erratic driving, a car that fits that description, see if any license plate reader hits, see if any, any of the other ground units spot it. They'll show up somewhere. They'll show up somewhere. And when it does, we'll be there. For now, we shift to two new carjackings, both on the west side, one of which illustrates how hard it can be to catch these suspects. The victim started to track his cell phone. Cell phone was tracked to this location where Chicago police located it. So they knew to throw the phone out of the car. They did. They knew that the police would probably track the phone. Sheriff, people will watch this and think, why aren't we doing more to stop it? Yeah, and they, they have every reason to be asking that question. Well, the law enforcement side of it, I challenge people to find something else that we could be doing that we're not doing right now. It is a nonstop game of cat and mouse that for us ended well after midnight, but another shift is coming on. The needle in a haystack chase never ends. Are you disappointed we didn't catch anybody tonight? No, because I think we, uh, I think we deterred a lot of people. A lot of people saw, well, they saw us out here. You know, there was a couple guys we lost, but they know that we're on them. You know, we had to make those, those four armed men run. They were scared. You know, and that's what we want to do. We want to let them know we're out here and we're going to hunt you. So the four teenagers in that Dodge did get away. The car they were in turned up the following day, dumped 10 blocks away from where it was carjacked north of Austin. Sheriff Dart tells us the suspects often change cars and drivers after the carjacking, which makes it even harder to prosecute even when they do catch them. Yeah, to have witnesses then try to give a consistent description has got to be difficult. Yeah, and the, the prosecution part of it is a completely different side of the story. I mean, we just decided to ride along and see what's happening. And I think in the end, we got the impression that it is difficult to catch them, and we saw it firsthand. Yeah, for that sure. lieutenant, though, he did have such a sense of optimism <laughs> as he continues decades into this job. Right, every night, uh, off they go. So you can track actually more about carjackings in your neighborhood if you're interested more on this. Grab your smartphone, you can scan the QR code on the bottom of your screen, and then search for your zip code or any zip code for that matter.